Good morning, fifth graders, and happy Monday. Today we're going to start talking about ordered pairs in the coordinate plane. This is a helpful skill for locating objects and one that you're going to use throughout the rest of your math career. I know you're going to do a good job, and so does Mr. Smiles. Let's dive right into our video. We'll start with our do now. What is the area of a poster with a width of three-fifths yards and a length of one and one-half yards? First, what operation am I going to use to find area? I need to use multiplication, so I'm going to multiply three-fifths times one and one-half. What's the first thing I need to do to multiply a mixed number? I need to convert to an improper fraction. How would I write one and one-half as an improper fraction? Well, 1 times 2 is 2, plus 1 more is 3 halves. So I have 3 fifths times 3 halves. What's 3 fifths times 3 halves? Well, 3 times 3 is 9, 5 times 2 is 10. So the correct answer is 9 tenths square yards. Let's look at number 2. My Kira has a pool that has a total volume of 250 cubic feet. If one section of the pool has a volume of 153 cubic feet, what is the volume of the other section? So I know that if I took two sections and put them together, they would have a total volume of 250. How can I find the volume of the other section? What operation do I need to use? I need to subtract. What's 250 minus 153? Go ahead and do that now. Well, when I subtract 250 minus 153, I get 97 cubic feet. Let's do another. What is the volume of the figure below? First, what is the length? How many cubes are on each row of the bottom layer? Well, there's one, two, three, four, five. What is the width? How many rows are there? There's one, two, three. I can multiply to find the number of cubes on the bottom layer. How many cubes are on the bottom layer? Well, 5 times 3 is 15. How many layers are there? There's 1, 2. I can multiply to find the total volume. What's 15 times 2? 15 times 2 is 30 cubic units. Don't forget your units. Let's look at a new type of problem. The volume of the figure below is 72 cubic meters. What is the height? Well, I have four answer choices, so I can try all four to see which one works. Let's do it. If it is two meters, I would need to multiply. Six times three. What's six times three? It's 18. Now I can multiply 18 times two. What's 18 times two? Well, it's 36. Is A a correct answer choice? No. I can slash it. Now let's try B. 6 times 3 is still 18. Let's try 18 times 3 to see if we get 72. What's 18 times 3? It's 54. Is B a correct answer choice? No. Let's try C. 6 times 3 is still 18. What's 18 times 4? Well, 18 times 4 is 72. Is C a correct answer choice? Yes, it is. We still need to try D just to make sure it's not correct. 6 times 3 is still 18. What's 18 times 5? 18 times 5 is 90. Is D a correct answer choice? No, it's not. So the correct answer here is C. When I see a problem like this, I should try every single answer choice. Let's do another. 
What's the volume of the figure below? Well, first I can do length times width. What's 3 times 8? It's 24. Now I can multiply times the height. What's 24 times 5? Well, 5 times 4 is 20. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 more is 12. So the answer is 120 cubic millimeters. Now let's do our last problem in the do now. What's 3 times 5 eighths? Which two numbers should I multiply when multiplying a whole number times a fraction? I'm going to multiply the whole number times the numerator. What's 3 times 5? It's 15. Over 8, the denominator doesn't change. Now I need to change that to a mixed number. What operation should I use to change this to a mixed number? I need to use division. When I divide 15 divided by 8, what's my result written as a mixed number? Well, 8 goes into 15 once, with 7 left over. So the correct answer is 1 and 7 eighths. For fluency this week, we're going to practice our fraction multiplication. Let's answer some problems. 5 6 times 1 half. Remember, I can multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. What's 5 6 times 1 half? It's 5 twelfths. What's 7 ninths times 1 half? It's 7 over 18. What's 1 half times 1 third? It's 1 sixth. What's 4 ninths times 2 thirds? It's 8 twenty sevenths. What's 5 elevenths times 1 third? It's 5 30 thirds. What's 1 eighth times 1 fourth? It's 1 over 32. What's 3 fifths times 3 fourths? It's 9 twentieths. What's 1 third times 5 sixths? It's 5 eighteenths. What's 1 half times 5 sixths? It's 5 twelfths. What's 5 6 times 1 third? It's 5 eighteenths. What's 1 half times 1 sixth? It's 1 twelfth. And what's 1 third times 4 fifths? It's 4 fifteenths. We're going to continue to work on fraction multiplication so that we're ready to apply it when we're finding area or solving other problems. Today we're going to learn for the first time about plotting ordered pairs. Today you can plot order pairs. We're going to do that on the coordinate plane. The coordinate plane is a set of two perpendicular lines called axes. The x-axis is the horizontal line. It goes side to side. The y-axis is the vertical line. It goes up and down. The origin is the point where the two axes meet. We can graph points based on their distance from the origin. The x-coordinate is the distance from the origin on the vertical line or x-axis and the y-coordinate is the distance along the vertical line, the y-axis. Points are named by ordered pairs. We write the x-coordinate first, then the y-coordinate. Let's look at an example. Right? Label the x and y axes, then write the ordered pair for each point. Well, remember the x-axis is the horizontal line. The y-axis is the vertical line. The point where they meet is called the origin. Its ordered pair is 0, 0, because there's no distance from itself. Let's locate point K. To locate point K, first I need to count the horizontal distance to find the x-coordinate. 
So let's do it. I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The x coordinate for k is 7 because it's 7 away on the horizontal axis. Now I need to count the y coordinate. It's 1, 2, 3 because it's 3 away on the vertical axis. So the ordered pair for k is 7, 3. Now let's look at t. What's the x coordinate for point t? It's 1, 2. What's the y coordinate for point t? It's 7. t is 7 up on the vertical axis. Let's look at point d. What's the x coordinate for point d? It's 4. What's the y coordinate for point D? It's 1. Let's look at point Q. What's the x coordinate for point Q? It's 5. What's the y coordinate for point Q? It's also 5. Q is located at 5, 5. Let's look at A. What's the x coordinate for point A? It's 5. What's the y coordinate for point A? It's 4. A is located at 5, 4. Now push yourself. Luke said that point M is located at 1, 3. Is Luke correct? Why or why not? Luke is incorrect because he wrote the y coordinate first. M is located at 3, 1. Remember, we write the x coordinate first, then the y, over and then up. Now you try a few. What's the ordered pair for point t? It's 2, 2. What's the ordered pair for point u? It's 3, 3. What's the ordered pair for point r? It's 6. 4. What's the ordered pair for point L? It's 5, 0. What's the ordered pair for point G? It's 4, 2. You may also be asked to locate a point based on its ordered pair. Let's find the point named by 3, 5. Remember, to do that, we need to go over first. 3 is the x coordinate, and 5 is the y. So we would go 3 over and 5 up. So 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The point that's named is h. Which point is at 2, 2, over 2, and up 2? Make sure you type your answer as a capital letter. It's s. Which point is located at 5, 4? It's P. Which point is located at 4, 1? It's point E. Which point is located at 3, 1? It's point M. Alex says that L is located at 3, 0. Is Alex correct? Why or why not? Go ahead and answer that question now. Alex is incorrect because he wrote the y coordinate first. L is located at 0, 3. Now you try it. Make sure you write your answers as a capital letter. Which point is located at 0, 3? It's M. Which point is located at 3, 5? It's G. Which point is located at 4, 3? It's F. Which point is located at 5, 4? It's C. Which point is located at 2, 2? It's Z. Now try a couple completely on your own. 
Look at number one. Fill in the ordered pairs for each letter. Go ahead and do that now. Let's see how you did. Y is located at 0, 07. B is located at 0, 01. D is located at 6, 8. V is located at 3, 9. And Z is located at 5, 8. Now let's try another. Write the ordered pair for each point in number 2. Let's see how you did. G is located at 4, 2. H is located at 0, 6. S is located at 0, 3. K is located at 4, 5. And C is located at 1, 3. Remember, we always write our ordered pair X, or horizontal, Y, vertical, over first, and then up. You've done a great job with this video. Now it's time to move to IXL Practice U.1, Objects on the Coordinate Plane. You're going to do a great job. Go crush it.